Hi everybody, I just want to say hello. My name is Lori. If you don't already know, my husband's name is Scott and we are renovating a 2011 Forest River Sunseeker Class C RV. She's 31 foot, she has a bunkhouse. We discovered after we thought we were done with our little remodel that our whole subfloor in our main living area was completely wet and rotten and um, a band-aid had been stuck on it. So we ripped all that out, uh, we re-insulated. We're working our way pretty much from the ground up again, uh, starting from scratch. So this is kind of a mashup of what we did over the course of 10 days. We're working around the extreme heat and humidity of the South right now. We're working around, obviously life happens and we need to get other things done. For the time that we had, we did pretty well considering. So this is just gonna be kind of a vlog style video about what we've done. I'm not ready to reveal what our design style is gonna be yet. We have changed that up because we're starting from scratch and we can now. So, but I am excited to share it with you. It's gonna be super unique, I'll, I'll say that. Um, a little bit rustic, a little bit old world, but that's all I can really say at this point until I make sure I can get things I need to make that happen. So anyway, without further ado, welcome to the second of the series of Opal VRV renovation. Just a quick mashup this week. I am cleaning with Dawn Power Wash all the areas where I'm going to be applying the Pro Flex RV caulking to any areas that the seal has been broken or I'm just not sure about at this point. I cut this on an angle and then I took it to my vise and I crimped it down a little bit to hopefully get a better bead on that. This stuff is definitely harder to work with than say like lap seal or regular silicone caulk, but I got it figured out. Scott is now working on the subfloor here, putting down the plywood and dry fitting those pieces after which we're going to take those out and apply some kills mildew resistant primer to avoid any type of water damage in the future we just felt that if we put some kills on that that would give us a little more protection in the event that any water was to get on the floor but we're really going to try super hard to not even allow that to happen Hence all the caulking on everything and all the sealant on the roof as well. So he's just gonna give it a good coat, doing all the edges, and then we're gonna flip it and do the underside. So as usual, once a week or more, we have to head to our local Lowe's hardware store to pick up some supplies. this plan I kind of wanted to do a faux brick treatment I'm not sure if we're gonna go with that yet but we did find a panel of this faux brick it's not very heavy trying to keep things light in the RV um, more on that later if we decide to actually use this it might be cool with what we're planning we'll see so then Scott has to put the water heater back in. This will be the second or third time we've taken it out and put it back in because we had to fix it the first time. And then, you know, we had to tear all the floor out underneath it and then decided that we wanted to do some underlayment underneath it as well. So I think total, we have probably removed this three times, but it is a brand new water heater. And I wish I'd done a video on that, but we did not at the time. While he's working on the inside on the water heater, I am taking the cover that goes on the outside. It's the vent cover, and this is the frame for that that goes on the face of the water heater. This is brand new butyl tape from the second time that we installed the water heater, but because I did this wrong, um, I am gonna scrape all this off and start fresh. 
What I did wrong here was I did not apply the butyl tape close enough to the edge, so it didn't really form an actual seal. We noticed when we took this off that it wasn't really forming a seal. It wasn't even really touching the outer wall of the RV. So that was not gonna work. Water was definitely gonna get in there. So this time when I apply the butyl tape, I'm actually taking it all the way to the edge and even a little bit over that edge. You can see how the edge curves. So I want that butyl tape to seal around the actual edge. I don't know if you'll see it here, but I go back and I actually press all that down. So there's a nice tight seal on the actual frame. So I'm just pressing. I'm just pressing down to form a better seal. And then you just peel off the backing and it's good to go. And if there is any lumpy spots, I just kind of press them down and flatten them out so it's all pretty even. This morning we're on our way to Jackson, Mississippi to Camping World for them to make a parts list for things like our slides that one of them needs to be repaired. We need new slide seal, our parasitic drain on our battery figured out and some other stuff. We have a lot of questions to ask and uh, so far over the phone they've been really, really nice. We'll see how it goes and we'll let you know. Now we're at one of our very favorite places. This is called Southeastern Salvage. It's outside of Birmingham, Alabama, and they have the most amazing selection of imported items, really unique stuff, stuff you just aren't gonna find anywhere else. And what we went here for was a beautiful butcher block countertop and this really incredible wood. I can't even pronounce the name yet, but I'm gonna let you know on that but it has variations of pinks and golds and even some greens and purples in it. So that is gonna really look good when we get some hard wax on it. But yeah, really unique store. If you wanna see more of this store and if they'll let me film, I'd be happy to show it to you sometime. Quick little montage of how hard Scott worked on piecing this um, sink, under sink cabinet together and with no screws or nails because I wanted to take everything out and stain them individually. He just had to kind of balance all this together with our old sink to make sure it was going to fit. Um, we have a beautiful countertop that's going to go in on top of this. So great job, Penny, on this. Now the cabinet pieces are inside our empty dining room and I'm going to stain them with True Black by Minwax. I'm trying to accomplish um, a faux treatment of what is called Shosugigon, which is a Japanese technique where they burn and kind of turn wood into charcoal on the outside. It strengthens it and protects it. And we both just really like the look of it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting on this black stain and I'm wiping it off immediately so that you still see the grain of the wood. I'm probably going to talk about this more later, but I just wanted to give a little brief intro. So because we're already emptying out the house for our downsizing into our full-time RV living, I have the dining room empty. So I put a tarp set up, down. some um, sawhorses here, and I am staining what will be the kitchen cabinets under the sink. And eventually we'll have some also for 
under our new two burner throw paint stuff. So we'll have a little more counter space because we went down from a four to a two burner. Just got some blue on here. Um, this is just for the, the side walls of the kitchen cabinet. This is my new toe kick that Scott made for me. This did not have a toe kick under it before, and now it will, and I'm so happy with it. Behind this false wall sits our hot water heater and our electrical. This will be where the shelf sits. Going back here so I can have one or two really nice deep baskets. We're not gonna do drawers, not on this piece because it's not really that deep. And then this is going to be our under sink kitchen storage. Just put a little bit of this on at a time and I'm just going to wipe it off. I don't want it to soak in super deep. Obviously, I want the grain to show through so it has more of a burn effect and just opaque color. actually burn the wood and put it on the siding of tiny homes. I'm seeing a lot of that and we both loved it. So we thought, well, why not do it in the kitchen? We wanted to bring some black in. We wanted to ground that space and make it separate from the rest of the living space in the motor home. Okay, so I just finished staining all the parts to the kitchen cabinets, which will be under the sink. And I'm gonna show you a close up here in a minute, but I use the, I think it's called True Black Stain from Minwax. And just applied it and immediately wiped it off so that the wood grain still showed through. Hopefully that's gonna be like a faux Shosugi looks bond. like that to me. And maybe if I need to, I can even sand a couple places before we put the Rubio Monocoat on it to distress it a little bit more. I haven't decided yet.
If you've made it this far into the video, thank you. We really appreciate it. We're new. We're doing our best to make decent video footage and and explain a couple things and at least at the very least be a little entertaining. Um, but mostly, if I'm completely honest, we're doing this so we can look back at this someday <laughs> and find the humor in it because it has been a lot. It's been a lot and it's still gonna be a lot. But this will be our full-time home, hopefully before the end of the year, November, December, something like that. We wanna be living full-time, so we have a lot to do. But we do really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If it's something I can answer, I will. If it's something I can't answer, but I found on someone else's YouTube channel, I will be happy to give credit where credit is due. I just have to say right now, before I forget to say it in another video, if it wasn't for this platform, is if it wasn't for YouTube and all of the people sharing their knowledge, we would not be able to do this like we're doing it. I mean, I have literally spent hours, days, weeks, months, maybe a year, researching and looking up all the ways to do a thing uh, for an RV. And I cannot express how grateful we are to the YouTube community for, for helping us and showing us how to do this. Like, if you know, you know. If you're here watching this, you know. You know, it's YouTube University all the way and we are so grateful. So thank you very much again for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's fine too. I hope you have a great rest of your week and we appreciate you. Thank you, bye. Our RV remodel, um, um, God, just quit saying it. Without, damn it. Hi, um, this 